What do the U.S. states of Nebraska, Illinois, Kentucky, West Virginia, and Tennessee all have in common? They all have a town called Crab Orchard. For this video, our interest lies in the volunteer state of Tennessee. The Lawas Railroad, formerly known as the Franklin Industrial Minerals Railroad, operates 16 miles of a former southern railway line from Rockwood, Tennessee, west to Crab Orchard where the company's quarry and processing plant are located. The line was built by the Tennessee Central Railway and its predecessors in the 1880s and 1890s as part of the line connecting Nashville with the southern railway at Emory Gap. Eventually, the line would become part of the 286-mile route between Harriman, Tennessee and Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Harriman is something along the lines of a division point on the CNOTP. Unfortunately, the Tennessee Central never truly achieved financial solvency and the end finally came in 1968 when the railroad was divided up among the connecting railroads with the eastern 36 miles between Harriman and Crossville going to the Southern Railway. The track between Monterey and Crossville was dismantled by the Louisville and Nashville in the 1980s and the Southern cut the line back to Crab Orchard in the 1990s, abandoning the 11 miles between there and Crossville. Both of these moves have proven to be very problematic to the recent advocates of the restoration of passenger train service between Nashville and Knoxville. The Nashville and Eastern Railroad was formed to revive the operation of the line's freight service to Old Hickory and Lebanon approximately 30 miles east of Nashville with occasional runs to point somewhat further east over the former LNN owned Tennessee Central trackage. The Nashville and Eastern once participated in the operation of the Broadway dinner train out of Nashville and today it hosts the Music City Star commuter rail service between Nashville and Lebanon. In the year 2000, the Nashville and Western Railroad was formed as a subsidiary of the Nashville and Eastern to take over the operation of the Old Tennessee Central from Nashville to Ashland City, which was on a portion originally sold to the Illinois Central, but was later operated by numerous short lines. By 2001, with the middle portion of the line already out of service, the Southern Railway's successor, Norfolk Southern, wanted to abandon the line completely. The last remaining customer west of Rockwood was the Franklin Industrial Minerals. Franklin produces limestone and calcium carbonate products and is the largest producer of high calcium chemical limestone in the United States and the railroad is vital to its operation. So, in order to preserve the rail service the company needed, Franklin Minerals bought the 16 mile line between Crab Orchard and Rockwood with interchange with NS made at Rockwood. Its railroad is a private carrier which uses the FIMX reporting marks and operates a small fleet of semi-famous ex-Southern Railway High Hood B23-7 diesels which is the spotlight of this video. Number 3999, whose NS heritage is obvious, is an ex-Southern that was built in 1981 and was bought by Franklin to be used as spare parts, and here it clearly shows. Number 3138 is the XCSX Low Nose Number 3138, Nay Seaboard Number 5149, Nay Seaboard Coastline Number 5149 that was built in 1978. The 4023 is an ex-Minnesota commercial Nay Southern Railway unit before that and was also built in 1981. Rounding out the roster is a 4th High Hood B23-7 number 4021 and a GE 110 ton center cab number 1297. The four operating units used to be painted in the very attractive gray and white with red trim scheme that you see here which worked well given the never-ending limestone dust. But in 2006, Franklin Industries was sold to the Chemical Lime Company out of Fort Worth, Texas which is part of the Loise Group headquartered in Limelet, Belgium thus making Franklin Industrial Minerals a part of the Loise North America of Tennessee. In the summer of 2012, the ownership change began to show with the red units painted blue with the LAWAS logo, although LAWAS still uses the FIMX reporting marks and name. In 2015, the railroad leased an ex-Union Pacific GP38-2 GMTX number 2171 that became a favorite with the crews as opposed to the rail fans. 
The 38 was returned to its lesser in 2017, and the railroad bought an EMD diesel of its own. GP35U number 3043 is said to be built as the Rio Grande GP35 number 3033 and is no more popular with the rail fans than the least GP38-2 was, and that's just the way it goes. From the time that the first road switcher was introduced in the 1940s, the high short hood was a feature found on most first generation diesels. The high nose provided space for sandboxes, toilets, and steam generators that heated passenger trains. Some railroads chose to run their high hoods short hood forward while others ran them long hood forward. Of those railroads that ran their high hoods long hood forward, they often did so by request of the crews. The crews, you ask? Yes, the crews. Coming straight out of the steam era, many crews wanted the additional feeling of safety of having the longer hood out in front just like it was on steam engines, so that's how it was. By the early 1960s, the low nose design was king, but a few railroads stuck with the high hood configuration. The Norfolk and Western and the Southern Railway are among the last roads that ordered the high hoods and took delivery of high short hoods all the way into the early 1980s. With that in perspective, it should come as no surprise that the only high hoods still operating on a Class 1 railroad in North America today are those that are still on the Norfolk Southern. The NS is a combination of the NNW and the Southern in case you're not hip to 21st century railroads. NS's high hood fleet remained steady as she goes for years, but over the last few years an aggressive and intensified push by NS to modernize its EMD units with new Admiral cabs has rapidly reduced the ranks of these four axle misfits. Moreover, Following the replacement by modernized mother slug sets at major switching yards and terminals, some 50 high hood GP38-2s were sold in late 2016 with more than 70 that were set to be auctioned off in August of 2017 which further thinned out their ranks. There are maybe 10 or so high hood SD40s that are still on NS, and I do mean maybe, so if you're looking to catch any of these 4 or 6 axle blacks before they're sold off or rebuilt, you'd better do it fast. Time is short for these 20th century survivors if you want to see them in their original form and in action.